Hey, Kadar, how's it going? Good, how are you, Leonard? I'm really good. Everyone, this is Leonard Lee, Executive Analyst at Next Curve, and I'm here in San Diego, the best city in the world. Right, wouldn't you agree? A hundred percent, there's yeah. no debate. Yeah, there's absolutely no debate, but uh, this is really great because this is the first architecture deep dive That's day right. for Snapdragon, and this is really exciting because we're talking about X2, right? Which you guys announced, yeah. Snapdragon. X2 Extreme. X2 Extreme. Yeah. Um, SOCs were announced at Snapdragon Summit. That's right. So yeah, this is great to have an opportunity to talk to you about these uh, pretty impressive chips that you guys have announced. And um, you know, you've uh, invited press and analysts from around the world and have opened up the kimono a bit given us yes. you know d much deeper actually insight into how you guys have engineered uh, these SOCs and getting some really impressive you know gen over gen uh, right. improvements in performance so I say this on behalf of a lot of the analysts fellow analysts who are in attendance here sure. we really appreciate the opportunity to do these deep dives and get under the hood to understand how you guys are achieving right. um, these generational improvements and so I wanted to give you an opportunity to maybe give the next curve audience some insights on how you guys made that happen right there's a lot of improvements that you guys obviously have made um, the CPU, the GPU, and the MPU, but maybe if you can, from a foundational perspective, help us understand how you guys are making these step changes. Yeah. Because they are pretty big. Yeah. Right. Leonard, first of all, thanks for joining us. Thanks oh, for joining us at Summit. Thanks for joining us here at Architecture Day. Obviously, for us, it's an exciting time. We mm -hmm. uh, started with this mission in uh, with entering the PC space with uh, the objective to drive... Uh, innovation and bring mm -hmm. excitement back into the PC space. Our intent is very simple. If you start with uh, the philosophy of the fact that we want to delight customers, the fact that we want to bring innovation, we feel like the PC just hasn't seen innovation in a very long time. Uh, we've been able to bring excitement mm -hmm. in phones and we want to bring that same level of excitement yeah. in Windows. For us, I think the core fundamental part of our design and philosophy is mm -hmm. that when you think of these devices as something that you carry around with you all the time, something that you wear all the mm -hmm. time, uh, power is obviously the most important thing. And so yeah. the way we bring innovation in is by focusing and starting our design philosophy with focusing on driving the best performance mm -hmm. at the lowest power. Mm -hmm. And I think what you probably heard uh, during the course of the architecture day through all of the engineers is there are decisions that are made in yeah. our entire platform. It's mm -hmm. not just the core SOC, but the entire platform yeah. that are made, that are driven towards driving that experience. So as long as we're consumer centric focused mm -hmm. and delivering the best experience, mm -hmm. and you know that you want to drive that best experience, mm -hmm. we'll always focus and bias ourselves towards technology. So whether mm -hmm. it's the CPU, whether it's the graphics core, whether it's our audio core, the NPU, you name it, mm -hmm. the core tenets of our design philosophy starts with yeah. best performance at the lowest power. Yeah, and one of the things I've noticed, um, and this is just like a takeaway from today's sessions, yeah. was from a microarchitecture perspective, especially from a memory standpoint, you guys have made some significant improvements. Okay, it goes back to uh, you know what we want the end objective to be, sure. right? So we focused, as you know, on three big vectors. Mm -hmm. The best performance, incredible battery life, and third was AI. Uh -huh. And when you think of AI and where the use cases are evolving, they're all yeah. very much tied to memory. Yeah. You know, you obviously want to be close to uh, the platform. You want to be able to go uh, run, you know, time before token. It's super important in terms of what matters for a good AI experience. Mm -hmm. Obviously, DDR bandwidth, so the reason why yeah. we announced the extreme is we had more DDR bandwidth available because mm -hmm. we know a lot of the AI use cases that everybody's running tend to need more and more DDR memory bandwidth. Yeah. So a lot of, again, tenants go towards driving those experiences that are needed to get the best AI outcome. Mm -hmm. So we moved microarchitecture back and you back into understanding what exactly is needed to go make this happen. You know, you and I talked earlier before we hit the record button about the <laughs> heterogeneity of computing supporting AI applications, right? Correct. I mean, I think right now there's such a fixation on large language models and uh, th that singularly being what is AI. But when right. you look at 
the entirety of how um, AI applications are built. There's a lot of other stuff underneath okay. that require and run more optimally on different IP. It's not right. necessarily one or the other, and that's one of the things that um, you can really appreciate in the designs and the design philosophy you guys have brought right. uh, to the, uh, the PC space. I, you know, honestly, you guys, uh, you know, people say game changing all the time, right? And sometimes they do it in a gratuitous way. You guys, honestly, with the X series, have changed the game, right? You, you made the industry, especially the, the PC industry, rethink oh, what the PC experience Right. should be, right? right, and have pretty much delivered on it. it. You know, AI for the PC seems to be much more than just these simple concepts that we associate That's with correct. AI. You know? I think it'll, it'll evolve very quickly because AI is such a ubiquitous thing. It's going to evolve yeah. for every use case. It's going to evolve for every consumer differently. Yeah. It's going to get deployed in commercial differently. And so yeah. our intent, again, the core philosophy is we yeah. want to drive disruption with technology, similar to what Absolutely. we've done in phones, yeah. and, you know, whether it's the camera, whether it's uh, the audio. The proximity of these features between yeah. a phone and a PC, it's incredible, right? Like we're still on video calls. You're still using the camera. You're still... Yeah, uh, you know, talking and you know, Absolutely. you want to display. So it's very similar yeah. in terms of. So it brings a very natural yeah. progression in terms of uh, use cases on a right. phone versus a PC. Yeah, and you know what? It's also uh, interesting because we're also observing how some of the principles of mobile computing and arch you know architectures right. and design are making their way up to the data center. That's right. <laughs> That's right. You know what That's I'm saying? Because uh, you know, you need power efficiency. You know, uh, that that's a big deal Great. right now. And you guys bring a lot of that DNA uh, across um, different categories of computing and definitely. applications. And so, yeah, it's interesting to see how you guys are scaling everything. You know, I yeah. know that like when you introduced Orion, that was one of the things that you guys made a big point about is how it's scalable it is. Correct. And so, yeah, especially as you make this move toward uh, data center, it'll be interesting for us to observe Correct. How you guys continue to scale it across different, uh, Correct. you know, categories. So, yeah. Hey, thanks Hi. a lot. It's great. Thanks, yeah, Leonard. Really appreciate you. Uh, thanks for having, joining us. Having me, and yeah, it's an absolute pleasure uh, being here. And and to our next curve audience, uh, thanks for uh, listening in. We'll see you next time. Thank you.